Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a strawberry pound cake. Now, it's easy to come across a lot of those uh, strawberry pound cake recipes on the internet. I particularly didn't like any of them, so I just decided to go with my own. But I added a little twist. And as usual with anything that um, I have personally written myself, I leave a lot of room for versatility. So you can add a pinch more of this or take away a pinch of that if you like or dislike certain things to give it your own personalization. So let's come along for the ride. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Strawberry pound cake, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is make a strawberry basil um, puree. Uh, I got my KitchenAid here and just to give you a point of reference, this is a nine cup uh, food processor. So that'll give you an idea of how much we use. Once it's all said and done though, about four cups of this is what we're going to use. But let's get through the process first. I just took a pack of strawberries, uh, rinsed them off with some water and vinegar. Split them in half, cut the heads off, and I'm dropping them in here now. We're going to add some other things. Uh, one thing that I added that <clears throat> you may or may not have readily handy in your kitchen is some French lavender. I used this to make a, um, earlier, I made a London fog cake, and I had some left over, so I said, well, I'll just drop this in here and see how it goes. And it, it well, to me, it turned out pretty good. And to those who I served it to, they liked it as well, so... But uh, the real star of the show is this beautiful, beautiful basil plant. Now, in my grocery store, um, you can pick up some living basil like this. Uh, I prefer it over anything that's already prepackaged, like chopped or, or ground up basil already. I prefer it like this. So, uh, but it's up to you. But I think this will give you the most pungent, the most aromatic the most flavorful uh, taste if you're looking for that I always look for more flavor more flavor more flavor more flavor and you can use a little bit less basil depending on how much basil you want you can add you can subtract it's really up to you or you can use no basil at all and still have a amazing strawberry pound cake lemon juice is well it can't be overstated the importance of lemon juice it just uh, adds a nice little zing to everything that you're doing. Not too much though, I, I didn't use too much. And I'm gonna add about a half a cup of sugar. Strawberries are pretty sweet, so you don't need too much. And we're gonna give that a whirl. Now after this we're going to give it a little scrape down, get some of those chunks that didn't quite get caught up in there, we're going to give it a whirl again. Okay so I've let this simmer on the stove, I let it reduce down and thicken up for about on medium for about 15 minutes or so. Once it starts to get that froth on top and start bubbling, it's just about where you want it to be. And once you let it sit and cool, it will also thicken up. And what, why that's so important is because you don't want to be adding uh, too much extra liquid to your, your uh, recipe. So I've got it cooling off now in a, in a glass bowl on the, on the stove top. By the time I get through doing everything else, this will be at the right temperature for me to work with it and add it to my batter. Okay, so let's get started. Now, notice this uh, beautiful, beautiful bunt pan that I'm using. I picked this up from uh, William Sonoma. Now, if you notice the relief in this, this pattern, this design, in order for it to work, in order for it to come out perfectly, you have to lube your pan meticulously. Now, whatever method you use, don't be afraid to go overboard with it you, you you will it will pay off in the end because you want your not only do you want your cake to come out but you want that beautiful design to show on it if you now you can also use a regular uh bump pan or two pan for this recipe whatever floats your boat so we're going to get right into it uh i'm using my kitchen aid mixer this is just going to go by a whole lot quicker 
with a mixer and trying to do it by hand. We're going to start off with three sticks of butter and I'll link all of the um, measurements in the description because I can't remember them right now off the top of my head but I do know three um, sticks of butter and about three cups of sugar and you notice how that butter instantly gave way. I, it should be room temperature. I usually let mine sit out about a day on the counter and let it get good and soft. Any, any uh, dairy ingredients that I'm using they're going to be room temperature. So I'm adding my, my sugar in now. And I'm going to beat that until it gets to a consistency. Kind of like um, wet sand. And that butter, uh, butter sugar combination will be kind of pale in color. So I let that go for about two to three minutes. <clears throat> and I'm going to add my eggs. Six eggs go in this recipe. I'm going to add them one at a time. What you can do is... Um, slightly beat your eggs if you want to beforehand but I just crack them in there and throw it in there because I'm using I'm not using a hand mixer or I'm not whisking by hand so I just let my mixer go ahead and do the work for me now this is going to uh, this is going to when your batter starts first beginning to start take shape uh, once you've got all the eggs in there uh, once they're completely incorporated in there no need to let it run continuously go right ahead into your next ingredients because a pound cake is a recipe that you don't want to beat the air out of it so just just enough for everything to get incorporated and then go on to your next step your next ingredient whatever that may be and that's why it's also important to have all your ingredients laid out so you won't be fumbling around once you get started you want to go 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 because it only takes i mean it takes like 15 minutes for this maybe not even that and it's ready to go in the pan so having all your ingredients there and ready having making sure your eggs and your butter and whatever dairy you're going to use because you can use milk you can use buttermilk sour cream cream fresh whatever you desire cream cheese whatever it is whatever that product is make sure that it's already at room temperature okay so all of those eggs are in there they're good and mixed in now we're gonna move on to now this this part of the um, we're gonna give it a little scrape down first because you can see a little rim has developed there no worries but it's important to get it scraped down early in this this part of the process because sometimes there could be just butter down there that the scrape uh, the your paddle is not scraping up so go ahead and scrape it down early in this process now we're gonna incorporate our um, flour and our buttermilk and we're going to alternate it we're not going to pour either one in all at the same time but first i'm going to add some remember i was telling you about lemon juice lemon extract uh really helps out a pound cake too just a drop you don't need much in there you don't need much at all and of course uh vanilla now this is a particular brand called flavor mate that uh a friend of mine brought back from uh antigua and it is i love it it is beautiful I don't um, skimp with my vanilla either. I mean, one uh, lady told me, she said, if your cake don't smell good, it won't taste good. And I'm a firm believer in that. So once you get to uh, smelling all the aromas of those different extracts, and here's some strawberry extract. Now this is what I was telling you about earlier. I use strawberry extract, but that's not gonna be the main place where I get my strawberry flavor from. It's coming from those fresh strawberries that we uh, post earlier so now I'm adding in my flour now you can use cake flour in this recipe I just use regular um, all-purpose flour uh, just make sure you get your measurements right because I, I'm some there are some um, cake flours that you don't measure measure for measure depends on which brand you use I found that I don't know why but that's what it is. So I'm alternating a, a cup of buttermilk with my um, 
three cups of flour and what I should have done is <clears throat> I always like to end with the liquid when I'm, I'm alternating this flour and milk because the, the, the key is you don't want to dry it out too much and you don't want to soak it down too much but you always want to add the moisture at the end because that flour absorbs a lot of moisture so when you're alternating this you can pour a third of your flour in then half of your um, I meant to say uh, half of your buttermilk in and then alternate the flour and, and buttermilk back and forth until you end with the buttermilk that's all I'm trying to say and it's just like all of our other ingredients as soon as it's incorporated we're not going to beat it to death we're just going to let it run long enough for everything to get incorporated and my baking powder now I'm gonna what I'm gonna start doing from now because I almost sometimes I will forget to add baking powder then I've got a cake looking crazy I'm just gonna start in, uh, dumping it in with my flour when I measure my flour out that way I won't have to think about it anymore I won't have to wonder did I forget to put it in there did I remember to put it in there that's what I'm gonna do maybe that's a, a helpful tip for anyone else out there who like me can be sometimes forgetful. I made a whole cheesecake one time and forgot to put sugar in it. Actually, that turned out great. I'm never gonna put sugar in that cheesecake again. I'll share that with y'all another time. But here we go. So now that our puree has sat, it's uh, thickened up quite a bit. You notice it's much thicker than when we first took it out of the blender. And I'm just gonna start adding dollops in there as we go. Now, this is about four cups. Now you can add as much or as little as you like depending on how much strawberry flavor you want. It's all up to you. It's, it's your show. You can save the rest for another recipe, make you some beautiful, amazing strawberry pancakes. However you want to do, whatever you want to do with it, it's, it's your show. Now, I have seen some recipes where people also add food coloring. I'm not too much a fan of that, but there is nothing wrong with it. That's just my personal taste. I mean, that's just what I um, prefer. So the color that I get from this pound cake is I want it to be as close to natural as possible. Now, this is some um, Jamaican rose water. Now, rose water is just rose first of all is very powerful so you don't need a lot it looked like i was pouring a lot there but i was trying to measure it out slowly without pouring it into a, a um any kind of measuring like a teaspoon or a tablespoon and so that's why it looked like it took so long so i'm just going to pour a little bit more now and i'm going to fold the rest of this in and in a minute this will be ready to go in the pan we're at the last stages and also by me folding this in, I'm getting the opportunity to scrape down the bottom of that bowl. Like I told y'all, sometimes those ingredients don't all get caught up by the um, whatever paddle attachment you're using. I use a paddle attachment with the flex edge like y'all can see. That's pretty good. It's just about the best of the attachments when it comes to a paddle. So now we're ready to go in the oven. So the reason why I'm scooping this in here instead of just pouring it in there and letting it fill up is because by this method here I can control it getting down into each crack and crevice what I'm doing is kind of like just using a thin layer to kind of paint the inside of the bowl in a sense and I'm going to spread it down with my spatula and get everything down in every nook and cranny and make sure that that beautiful relief shows up on that cake when you pull it out of that pan. I have had a complete disaster before trying to make a carrot bunt cake and the whole thing got stuck in there. The whole entire thing because I did not use enough, <clears throat> excuse me, of my baker's joy. And when I get around the, the, uh, the rim, I see how I push it out to the edges as well when it's the closer it gets to the top so that it's not gonna it, it will it will conform to the sides and even more of that beautiful pattern that beautiful relief will show up on your cake so it's uh 
it's a little more meticulous than just pouring it into a tube pan or uh, any other pan that doesn't have a design but it is definitely worth it when you bring it out of the oven and you see how beautiful everything is and the rest of this batter here I can do I can make little mini pound cakes or I can make some cupcakes whatever the case may be I end up making some um, other mini bun uh, cakes because William Sonoma they make these little mini bun pan cake pans too they're amazing I'll leave a link to this uh, this particular pan right here I really enjoy using it and all of the other products I use from them all right so that is it this is ready to go in the oven I will put it in the oven for about an hour and 15 minutes but I check it at 45 minutes while that's in the oven we're going to go ahead and make a glaze I'm going to start with just some plain old icing sugar or powdered sugar as as it's called here some powdered sugar and we're coming back again with that strawberry basil puree that I made er earlier see and and that is part of the reason why I made so much because it is so versatile you can use it in other recipes you can use it to make this glaze that we're gonna make to go on top of this cake because a pound cake a pound cake you can make a good pound cake without a glaze but man it's even better with a glaze so I'm just gonna pour in enough to get to the consistency that I want where I like to drizzle it on there so whenever I get to get it to that consistency that's when I'll stop so I'll play with it I'll go back and forth a spoonful of sugar here a spoonful of puree here and I'm just gonna use a, 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 a the whisk attachment off of my um, hand mixer it's, it's not going to take me long at all to get what I want it won't take you long either so I'm just going to start up and one thing you want to make sure you get all of those clumps out of there I probably should have sifted that sugar into there that would have made the process a little bit easier but it's not really a big deal you can, I mean you're doing this by hand because it's so easy it's such an easy process by the time you whip it around as you can see most of them have already disappeared now this is not quite the consistency I want it to be right now so I'm gonna continue to roll with it continue to play with it a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more until we get it to where we want to get it to And here's a secret ingredient, orange blossom water. Now orange blossom water, it's amazing. It tastes good. But just like rose water, it is very powerful. You see how little I put in there? But you will be able to tell the difference. I like to use orange blossom water anytime I'm making anything with berries. Uh, just to kind of give it a little zing, give it a little citrusy, citrusy flair. But as I showed you, you don't need much. So I probably poured a little too much in there and now my, my glaze is a little more liquidy than I would like. So I just added a little more powdered sugar. The more powdered sugar you add, the thicker it'll be, the more other liquid ingredients will be, the runnier it will be. I want it to be a, a good balance, like right in the middle. Not too thick, not too runny. Now cake has come out of the oven and look at that. Now that's the result of putting in some hard work, a little bit of extra elbow grease and uh, first how we grease our pan and then secondly how we poured our batter in there. And look at her, she is absolutely gorgeous and delicious. I can tell you that for, I wish y'all could smell it. I mean, it is wonderful. Now I didn't, I poured this glaze on after this cake had cooled for about an hour. Otherwise, it would have just made it all runny and maybe made the cake soggy. But now it's ready to receive it. And what will happen is that that glaze will kind of harden up like a, like on a donut, like on a, a glazed donut. And if you come this far, congratulations, you have made a strawberry basil pound cake that you will want to share this recipe with everybody that you know. I'm glad y'all have enjoyed this video. And, well, I don't know if you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave me a heart in the comments. Leave me a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you have not already. Here's two more videos for consideration. And whatever you do.